Selwyn showed us there the two most familiar reggae keyboard parts. The first is the skank, which often doubles the guitar on beats two and four of the bar, like this. One, two, three, four. The other is the shuffle or bubble, where the left hand plays between the beats of the bar. And the right hand plays the skank as before. If the role of keyboard is extended to include the use of samplers and synths, then the guitar is free to do other things. This is happening already with bands like Bloodfire Posse and in the UK with our own very special Steel Pulse. Here's Selwyn Brown again on the changes that synths have brought to the reggae sound. Sometimes we'll be in the studio, we'll lay down the, ba ba the basic um, tracks, like say either the, the drum machine or a real drummer and the bass line. Then we lay down the piano, which is what we call the skank. Then we start building on top of that with a synthesizer melody. Sometimes it might just be like a Rhodes or it might be like um, a warm flute sound or something like that. Then later on we go into the more um, sort of synthetic sounds, you know. It's just to sort of decorate the music and make it more interesting, you know, because we sort of listen to a lot of other kinds of music as well. And we try and bring those influences in and we still keep the roots because the bass and the drums and the skank is still there. the keyboard and the guitar play a very similar part and this can sound good in any style of music but sometimes it can be more effective to contrast what you play in this next piece I start off playing long sustained chords on the guitar that contrast against Alistair's percussive sequence then we swap I play a very fast picked guitar part and Alistair plays sustained chords on the synthesizer some rhythmic ideas for the relationship between bass and drums. If your drummer plays a pattern that you like the sound of, first of all, just listen. Don't simply plow straight in. Once you've identified the tempo and basic pulse, one idea might be to lay down a steady eight to the bar. then listen to one part of the rhythm and then pick out the main accents. In this example, the bass drum. Now once you're comfortable playing along, try a more continuous fill based on the overall kit pattern. 
something like this. Most of the time, simply picking out the main accents on fills will keep the momentum going and add excitement. You can also use extra dynamics by using unison fills. Now in the next example, we could choose to do any of these things, but what we end up doing is dependent on guitar and keyboards. <laughs> So, at the heart of playing any instrument is rhythmic coordination, but also the way the different instruments in the band are rhythmically coordinated is the secret of many different styles. So, stop for a moment, listen to what each person is playing. Sometimes playing together in rhythmic unison is very effective, other times leaving space for one another or playing off one another creates the effect that you're after. But, for now, we're going to leave you at the feet of the master, Jules Holland. The other thing in piano playing is the stamping of the foot. Why do we have the stamping of the foot? Often to keep time, also because it will illustrate windows to us where there are big gaps in a pub or something, and there's no accompaniment or a club. Your foot will illustrate those gaps, thus this.